Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's great to be with you guys again. I think the, the last time I was able to come was two years ago in 2021. It was the first time I came. And um, so when I got the opportunity to come up again and got the invitation, I was, I was really glad for the opportunity uh, to come up and see you guys again. So what I wanted to do, uh, first of all, was I wanted to give you an update of where we are at right now in our journey to Uruguay, South America. So I'll give you a little bit background on how God has led me there. I, I actually grew up as a missionary kid in Uruguay. My parents are missionaries there. They still continue to serve there. They've been there for, I think, about 30 years now. Um, so that's where I, where, where I grew up. Um, and then once I graduated high school, I went to Appalachian Bible College down in, in Beckley, West Virginia. And um, I studied there and I graduated from Appalachian Bible College or ABC in 2019. I did, a, after, let's see, after I graduated Appalachian Bible College, I went to Fellowship Bible Church, which is about... It's about three hours from here, um, down in near Martinsburg, West Virginia, in Charlestown, and I did an internship at the church there at Fellowship Bible Church. And uh, during my internship there at Fellowship Bible Church is when God really started leading me back to Uruguay. Uh, God started um, showing me and um, directing me to go back and serve in Uruguay. So Fellowship Bible Church actually accepted to be my sending church, and I started that process uh, of, of going back to your way, I think it was about the end of 2020, going into 2021. Um, so I started that process. I was not married yet. I was still single, and so um, I started working through that process of raising support and uh, being accepted by uh, the mission board I'm with, Biblical Ministries Worldwide, or BMW. And um, after I was accepted by BMW, um, you know, I, I was visiting churches. That's when I came here and um, visited you guys. You guys took me on for support in this process as well. And I was able to get up to about 60% of uh, my support that I needed to get back. And then I met Alexa, um, and Alexa goes to uh, my church, Fellowship Bible Church, my sending church, and we met in 2021, in May of 2021, um, and that's when we started dating, and one year later to the date, um, we were married in last May of 2022, and um, that's it hasn't changed, that hasn't changed our plans of going back to your way at all. Um, Alexa is uh, going to um, accompany me and uh, to South America, and uh, she feels God calling her to follow me back there. So after we were married, uh, this changed plans a little bit um, of just the, the timeline of, of getting back to Uruguay. So, uh, she had a little bit of uh, school loans that we needed to take care of after we were married. Uh, they didn't want us going back to the mission field with those uh, student loans. So we took the next about eight months and we, have, we were working on getting those student loans pay off so we can keep on uh, continuing this process of getting back to Uruguay. So I have been uh, working as a, an IT support technician. Um, we're both working um, full-time right now. Um, so I I've been working as a, an IT support technician. Alexa has been working as a counselor for children in foster care. Um, Alexa actually has her master's degree in counseling from Clark Summit University, which is actually about five hours from here in, in Pennsylvania. Um, and so we have been, we, we've been working on those, on those student loans and a couple months ago in February, we actually made our last payment on those student loans. And um, so we are now completely free of those and we are able to continue this process of 
of going back to Uruguay. Uh, she is now, Alexa is now working on joining the mission board that I am with, uh, Biblical Ministries Worldwide, BMW, and that's kind of the process that we are in right now. Um, she is going through the, the, the process of submitting applications in July. Next month, we are actually going to be going and attending a two-week training session with BMW. Um, it's going to be a combination of cross-cultural training, and um, so Lexa can meet with the board, and we can finalize that process, get her accepted with the mission board. And um, so we're, we're slowly walking through that process there, um, just one step at a time. After the training at BMW, um, we are continuing uh, looking to raise support. We're going to be visiting churches. Um, um, we're going to be continuing that process. It's a long process. Um, you know, after getting married, the um, support levels increase a little bit as well. Um, you know, you got a bigger family, so we're going to be working on that process next. That is going to be the next step that we're going to take. Um, after that, we are um, going to have to attend language school for about one to two semesters, um, so Alexa can learn Spanish and um, so that we are, you know, able to communicate when we return. We've been working on studying Spanish for, you know, during this process for a little bit. We use, like, different, different apps and stuff that are available to us. Um, so we are, we're continuing to, uh, to learn a little bit, you know, as, as we go. Um, but it would still be necessary for us to... Um, to go to language school, which would be kind of like a, a crash course, get us, um, get Alexa um, being able to, to speak in, in, in a couple semesters. Um, both of our, our jobs that we are working now have been totally of God, and um, it's been amazing to see how he keeps on directing us in, and showing us what he wants us to do. Um, when, when we return to Uruguay, I am... I'm really interested in in pursuing in serving in a administrative and helping way to a Bible college that is down there and in one of the one of those areas that I would that I feel God wanting me to serve in is the area of IT support and God has blessed me with a job um, where I can get that experience as I look to to minister in that area in the future um, Alexa, also, she, she, she got her master's in counseling, and God has given her a wonderful job of being able to work with these kids in foster care, and we just see God um, just using both of those things to give us experience, to, to continue to show us and um, train us for the future and what he wants us to do. So when we return to Uruguay, we are going to be working with a Bible college called FEBU, uh, F-E-B-U. It stands for Facultad de Estudios Bíblicos in Uruguay, or the, um, the Uruguayan Bible College. And uh, we're going to be working with them in, in uh, a variety of different ways. And like I said, I, I really feel God leading me to help them in, in a in a teaching role, in an administrative role, in a helping role, helping them um, as they attempt to spread God's word and uh, provide biblical, sound biblical teaching to Uruguay and other surrounding South American countries. Um, Alexa is going to be involved there with her counseling as well in uh, in the community, in the church, and even possibly in the, the Bible college. So we're looking at, we're looking at probably another uh, one to two years, um, just slowly taking these steps until, um, and that, that's our goal for being able to go back, um, just slowly taking one step at a time, trusting God with the process. Um, we would like to be there right now. Uh, this is something that, you know, we we desire to, to be there right now. We want to be working um, and helping them right now, but um, 
it, it just takes a little bit of time to get back, and God is slowly leading us through that process. So how can you pray for us uh, in this process? How can you pray? Well, first of all, you can pray that, you know, even though we may not be in your way right now, pray that we can be faithful where we're at, where God has us right now. Uh, pray that we can be faithful. Uh, pray that we can be faithful in our church and um, in, in our walk with the Lord. You can pray that we can stay faithful. Uh, pray for that we can get these meetings with churches. Pray that we can be able to build contacts and raise this support that we need quickly. Pray for um, this time that we will have to take to go to language school. Um, and also be praying that we can continue to serve the Lord in our jobs that we have now, continuing to, to help those around us and serve the Lord. Um, we do have a, we send out, it's about a bi-monthly email um, update. Um, so we do have, if you would like to be on that list and get updates from us, um, uh, yeah, you can speak with us afterwards. Give us your email. We'd love to put you on that list. We'd love to uh, be able to keep in touch with you. We are currently working on a new prayer card as well. The, the old prayer card that uh, you guys might have or the picture is was still when I was not married. So we are working on, on getting that prayer card changed soon. And um, we would love to, to get some up to you guys here when that is done. All right. And um, yeah, feel free to, to, if you have any questions about our ministry and what we're doing, uh, feel free to speak with us afterwards. We'd love to talk with you um, about what God is doing in Uruguay. For... The rest of our time this morning, I did want to open up God's Word, and I wanted to, to look at a few things here. Before we start, let's, let's go ahead and pray really quick and just ask God that He can uh, bless this time this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning, I pray that you would make us teachable. I pray that you would um, help us to learn from your word. I pray that you would help us to focus on you, and Lord, I pray that you would constantly be changing us to be more like you. Help us to love you more. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. This world that we live in is full of unfaithfulness. In our society, divorce is rampant because of unfaithfulness. Um, whenever we, you know, whenever we look at the news, um, it's, it's full of unfaithfulness. You see ministries collapsing around us because of unfaithfulness. Um, me and my family, we've seen missionaries leave the mission field um, due to unfaithfulness. And unfaithfulness is honestly so common um, these days that it, it's it's almost expected anymore. Um, you expect um, people to be, to be unfaithful. And the worst part is that all of this unfaithfulness is the result of this world being unfaithful to God. It all started when Adam and Eve were unfaithful and they ate of the fruit that they were commanded not to eat. And, and that's what I want to talk to you guys about this morning, is 
is faithfulness. And I want to specifically look at the life of King David uh, because King David was a man of faithfulness. A very rare occasion in that time period of the Bible, uh, David was a faithful man. So if we look at that period that David, that the story of David is in, you know, you have Adam and Eve being unfaithful to God in the garden, right? And then you go to the children of Israel, the children of Israel going from out of Egypt. They were constantly unfaithful to God. They, they made the golden calf. They were constantly turning their backs on him. They were complaining. They weren't trusting him. They were constantly unfaithful. That was why they had to spend an extra 40 years wandering in the wilderness because of unfaithfulness. And then you would get to um, Joshua. It was, it was a short period of faithfulness during his leadership. And then after Joshua, you have the book of Judges. And the book of Judges, the whole book is a time period of unfaithfulness. Every chapter you're reading about the, the children of Israel being unfaithful to God, turning their backs on him, worshiping idols. And what does God have to do? He, he has to punish them. He has to bring them to repentance. They come back to God. He blesses them for a period of time. The next chapter, the children of Israel are unfaithful. They turn their backs on God. And then in the book of, uh, basically from, from 1 Samuel onward, where we have the where the children of Israel get a king, you have all of the kings of Israel, there was very few that were actually faithful their entire lives to God. You had, you had some kings that um, they started out pretty good, and in the end, they ended up turning their backs on God. You had other kings that started out pretty bad, and then towards the end of their lives, they ended up turning towards God, but David was one of the few kings that was faithful to God during his entire life. What is faithfulness? Well, faithfulness is being steadfast in affection or allegiance, being loyal. It could also mean being firm in adherence to promises or an observation of duty. It could also mean being given with strong assurance. What I want to do is I want to, I want to look at just a couple aspects of David's faithfulness of his life. And the first aspect is that David recognized that faithfulness was important. This isn't, just, uh, this isn't just a character trait, but he, he realized that this was extremely important to God. In um, Psalm 31, um, you don't have to turn there, in Psalm 31, verse 23, this was a psalm of David. Uh, David writes, Love the Lord, all you his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful but abundantly repays the one who acts in pride. The Lord preserves the faithful. Uh, a couple psalms later, in Psalm 37, in verse 3, this is another psalm of David, one that David wrote. He writes, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. David realized that faithfulness was important. It was so, he realized it was so important that when Solomon was about to become king, David, you, if you want to turn with me to um, 1 Kings, and we're going to look at 1 Kings chapter 2. So this was, David knew he, he, he was about to die, okay? He's, he's getting old. Um, Solomon is about to become king, and so he gets with Solomon, and he gives Solomon instruction. 
He gives Solomon instruction as Solomon is about to become king. So read with me 1 Kings chapter 2. We're going to read verses 1 through 4, and this is what it says. It says, When David's time to die grew near, he commanded Solomon, his son, saying, I'm about to go the way of all the earth. Be strong and show yourself a man and keep the charge of the Lord your God, walking in his ways and keeping his statutes, his commandments, his rules, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn, that the Lord may establish his word that he spoke concern me, saying, if your sons pay close attention in their way to walk before me in faithfulness with all their heart and with all their soul, you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. God is telling Solomon, look, God has given us promises. God has promised to bless us. God has promised that there will be someone on the throne from our bloodline if we stay faithful to him. And this is the same promise that God made to Israel this entire time. He says, look, I'm going to bless you. I will give you this land. I will make you prosper. All I ask is that you stay faithful to me. Obey my commandments. Love me. And so this is what David is telling Solomon. He realizes that it is so important for their country, for Israel to prosper, to be blessed, that he tells Solomon, he says, be faithful to God, obey God, keep his commandments, keep his statutes, his rules, his testimonies, stay faithful. Um, it is so important that he actually addresses the entire nation of Israel about it as well. Um, a couple books later in First Chronicles, if you want to turn there as well, and we're going to be looking at 1 Chronicles 28. In 1 Chronicles 28, this is going to be, um, even though it's, it's a completely book, different book of the Bible, this is also um, addressing the time right before David is about to die. Okay, David, David knows he's about to die, um, and... Uh, but in this chapter here, he's actually addressing not just Solomon, but he's addressing the people of Israel. And in verse 1, it says that David assembled at Jerusalem all the, official, all the officials of Israel, the officials of the tribes, the officers of the divisions that serve the kings, the commanders of thousands, the commanders of hundreds, the stewards of all the property and livestock of the king and his sons, together with the palace officials, the mighty men, all the seasoned warriors. So he's addressing basically all the leaders of Israel. And in verse, look at verse 6 through 8. And David is telling um, of what God has told him. So he said to me, or God said to me, It is Solomon your son who shall build my house and my courts. For I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. I will establish his kingdom forever if he continues strong in keeping my commandments and my rules as he is today. Now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the assembly of the Lord and the hearing of our God, observe and seek out all the commandments of the Lord your God, that you may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance to your children forever. He's telling the leaders of Israel, he's telling them, be faithful, be faithful to God. God will bless you if you stay faithful to him. David realized that faithfulness was important. Faithfulness in our lives is important to God. And we need to realize how serious it is. God desires each one of us 
to be faithful to him. I'm a, I'm a pretty big soccer fan, okay? I, I love soccer, I love watching the games, and um, every year there's a transfer period where uh, players can be sold to other teams, okay? So a player gets sold, uh, goes to the new team, and when game day comes, the last thing you're ever going to see is that new player coming onto the field wearing the jersey of his previous team, right? You're never going to see that. And in our minds, that's, that's something that would, that's, that would be absolutely ridiculous and unthinkable, right? So if, if something like that is unthinkable, for us, think absolutely ridiculous. How, how do you think God feels when, for those of us who have put our faith and trust in him to save us from our sins, we have become a part of God fam- God's family, how do you think God, God feels when we turn from him back to our old life, when our old life attracts us, when when our old lifestyles, our old emotions, our old habits, when they attract us and we turn away from God, how do you think God feels? Faithfulness is extremely important to God, and God desires us to be faithful to Him. So, not only did David recognize that faithfulness was important, but it was also, it was evident in his life. Turn with me to 1 Samuel. We're going to look at the uh, book of 1 Samuel and uh, look at 1 Samuel 22. We're going to look at a couple of examples of where faithfulness was evident. It, he didn't only realize it was important, but he actually demonstrated it in his life, and it was evident. In 1 Samuel 22, uh, this was during the time where David was fleeing from Saul. God had promised David that he would be king over Israel. And yet, right now, David is not king. And actually, he's a very outlaw in the land that God promised him to be king. And he's fleeing for his life. And David had just gone to Ahimelech, and Ahimelech had given David, the, him and his men, um, the holy bread. And I believe he gave David the, the sword of Goliath at that period too. So Saul has come to Ahimelech, and in chapter 22, Verses 11 through 15, Saul is talking to Ahimelech, who is a priest. And it says this, it says, Then the king sent to summon Ahimelech the priest, the son of Ahitub, and all his father's house, the priests who were at Nob, and all of them came to the king. And Saul said, Hear now, O son of Ahitub. And he said, Here I am, my lord. And Saul said to him, Why have you conspired against me? you and the son of Jesse, in that you have given him bread and a sword and inquired of God for him, so that he has risen against me to lie in wait as at this day. Then Ahimelech answered the king, and who among all your servants is so faithful as David, who is the king's son-in-law and captain over your bodyguard and honored in your house? Is today the first time that I have inquired of God for him? No. Let not the king impute anything to his servant or to all the house of my father, for your servant has known nothing of all of this, much or little. David was a faithful man, and it was known even to Ahimelech the priest. He says, And who among all your servants is so faithful as David? Look at um, a couple chapters over in 1 Samuel 30. In chapter 30, in 
and in verses 1 through 6. So a little background to these verses here. David had just been speaking with the Philistines. Um, He's not king over Israel yet. He's still running for his life. And so he comes back to his family that were at Ziklag. And in verse 30, it says, Now when David and his men came to Ziklag, on the third day, the Amalekites had made a raid against the Negev and against Ziklag. They had overcome Ziklag and burned it with fire and taken captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great. They killed no one but carried them off and went their way. And when David and his men came to the city, they found it burned with fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. Then David and all the people who were with him raised their voices and wept until they had no more strength to weep. David's two wives had also been taken captive, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal and of Carmel. And David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because all the people were bitter in soul, each for his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. David is going through probably one of the hardest points in his life. Okay, he had been promised to be king over Israel, and he is now running for his life. So everything that God promised him, it looks like it's, it's not going to be, it's, it's never going to come true. It's not possible. And so not only would that be discouraging, but then he comes back and now his entire family is gone. They've been, they've been taken away. And not only that, but then everybody that's with him now is, is speaking of stoning David as their leader. But what does David do in this instant? David is not, David doesn't turn his back on God. David does not blame God for what has happened. David does not question why why God hasn't made him king over Israel yet. What does it say? It says, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And we see this time after time over David's entire reign. Even when later in his reign, when, when Absalom, his own son, turns against David, what does David do? David stays faithful to God. It was evident in his life. This isn't something that, that David knew was important, but he actually lived it out every day of his life. Now, with... With, in me and Alexa's relationship, I can say a lot of things, but what really matters to her is when I actually do those things and act upon those things that I say. And it's important for us. We, I mean, if these are probably things that that you have heard many times, you know, relation, uh, faithfulness is important. We know that, you know, those are things that we can say. We, it's easier for us to say those things and to judge others for their unfaithfulness. Yet these are things that have to be evident in our lives as well. So how do, we, how do we demonstrate faithfulness? How do we show faithfulness to God in our lives? Well, how many of you set aside time to spend with God every day? How many times, or how much time do you set aside every day to speak with God? How about obeying God. God gives us many commandments. God tells us to to love our wives, love our husbands. He tells us to love other people. He tells us to, to share the gospel, to disciple. How are you obeying him in 
in all of those ways every day? How about the difficult times that we go through? All of us go through hard times. And one of the most common responses for us going through hard times is we get mad at God. We blame God for what's happening. We question why he would do something like that to us. If you're going through a hard time, are you holding on to God? Are you being faithful to him? Are you trusting him? How about in the opposite direction, when everything seems to be going well, when you seem to have everything under under control, when it doesn't really feel like you need God, are you still holding on to God? Are you still being faithful to him? During every, during all of those times that we go through, how much time do we praise him? How about humbling ourselves before him every day, submitting to his plan for our life over our own? These are ways that we need to be demonstrating our faithfulness to God every day of our lives. David realized that faithfulness was important, but not only did he realize it, but it was evident in his life as well. To conclude, I want to uh, just look at a couple things. So first of all, what can we learn about God? Well, the first thing that we can learn about God is that, I mean, David is a great example of faithfulness through his life. But the ultimate example of faithfulness that we can look at is God. God is the ultimate example of faithfulness. He continues to love us every single day, even though we don't deserve it. He loved us so much that he sent his only son to the world to take the punishment for our sins. The world every day turns their back on him and spits in his face, and yet what does God do? God still loves the world, and he offers the gift of salvation to anyone who desires it. God is the ultimate example of faithfulness. For those of us who have put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, guess what? We are part of God's family, and we belong to a jealous God. God, the Bible tells us that God is a jealous God. I've never seen a relationship where the relationship is completely healthy and fine when one person is unfaithful. There is always hurt, there's mistrust, there's anger, and there's a lot of other things that go on in a relationship where there has been unfaithfulness. And we cannot be unfaithful to God and expect our relationship with him to be perfectly fine. Through our faithfulness, Our faithfulness is how we show our love for God. So what can we change in our lives? Well, we have to realize that God desires us to be faithful. In 1 Corinthians 4, uh, Paul writes in in verses 1 and 2, He says, this is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found faithful. God wants us as his children. All he wants from us is that we stay, is that we be faithful to him. that we show our love for God and all that he's done for us through faithfulness. 
It is essential in our Christian lives. David is a great example of faithfulness to God, and I pray that we can become more like David in this area as God continues to make us more like himself every day. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for everything that you continue to do for us every day, for loving us, for showing us mercy and grace, for guiding us, for providing for our every need. And Lord, I pray that you would, you would help us to, to love you more, that you would continue to help us to be faithful to you every day, that we would never lose sight of your glory and your love, that we would hold on to you no matter what happens in our life. Whether it makes sense, whether it's hard, whether we are successful, that we would always hold on to you. I pray that you would continue to change us, that we would use these examples that you've given us in your word to become more like you. We lift the rest of this day up into your hands, and uh, we give all the glory and the praise to you. We pray all these things in your name. Amen.